All right, in this video, we're going to talk about includes and requires in PHP. So I have a simple PHP web page here. Um, all the HTML, the CSS, everything is inside this page right now. Now, typically, good practice would be to take the styles and put them inside of an external link, but I'm putting it inside of here just so you'll have all the code when you download it as a code gist. So the idea behind includes and requires is the same thing for both. It's taking part of a page and saving it someplace that it can be reused. So if I had a website that had, let's say, a thousand web pages, and every one of those pages has this same title and this same navigation and this same footer, the only part that changes is the content in the middle of my page. So I don't want to have to rewrite this HTML every time on every single page. I'd like to take those bits and pieces of HTML and save them separately. And that's what an include is. So let's take this nav element. I'm going to cut it from this page, save, so it disappears from here. I'm going to go into a separate page that I've got. Now, my naming convention here is inc dash and then whatever the element is. This is just a naming convention that I'm following for this video. You don't have to have this as the name. It can be called anything at all as long as it's a .php page. So inside of here, if I was going to put some PHP code, I could add a PHP code block. But really, it's just this piece of HTML. That's all that I need here. So I'm saving that. That's what I've got on the page. There's no CSS being applied because I've got no CSS linked to this page. If I go to the page directly, I see that little piece of HTML. Now if I come into here, now I want to put this piece back inside of here. So I create a PHP block, and inside of there, I'm going to say include. Now I've got two choices here, include or include once. The difference between them is include, I can include the same file again and again and again and again. So if I ha had, let's say as an example, uh, a page that was going to generate a random advertisement and I wanted to place that on my page, I would use include because very likely I will include that same component again and again. So my page was called inc-nav.php. Save the difference and there it is. So this is going off and fetching this include file. Now I can put these inside of another folder. I very often will have a folder called includes and I will place all of these files inside there. And if that were the case, then I would do this. If my folder was called includes, I'd say start where I currently am, wherever this page is located, go into the includes folder, look for this file and include that. We are inside our current folder, so this is how I'm going to do it for now. So the alternative was include underscore once. When I want something to be not repeated, what happens is I will show you with the footer. Okay, so we'll take our footer, cut it, save, footer disappears here. I go over to my blank page, I paste the footer inside of here, save it, yep, we're good. Come back to the parent page, still don't have my footer, so I will add a PHP block, and let's say include inc-footer.php, this is the file that I want. Yes, okay, there's my footer back. Now, if I repeat this a few times, this is what happens. So here's multiple copies of the include. Now if I change this to include once, now this is what happens. I only get one copy of it. Every time I call include once, this command checks to see if this file has already been included somewhere on the page. It doesn't have to be right after it like this. It can be anywhere on the page. And if it does exist already, if it has already been included, then it won't be included again. So only one of these will show up. And that's the difference between include and include once. Now, what happens if we include a file that doesn't exist yet? So let's say I 
put this into my header. Save that, come back here, and I will say include inc dash header.php. So I've misspelled it. This file does not exist. Okay. Now this is what happens when you have an include that fails, that doesn't exist. You get this error message. However, the rest of the page still loads. Now this is the difference between include and require. An include can fail. You will see the error message. Unless you've got the error messages suppressed, you can go into the settings and say, I don't want to see the error messages. But if the error messages are being displayed, they will show up but the rest of the content on the page will appear. If I come in and change this from an include to a require, when this fails, I get the error messages, but nothing else on the page gets rendered. That's the difference between require and include. There we are. So require, include, they're doing the same thing. They're going off, they're fetching it. If we say require once, it's going to do the same thing as include once. The only difference between require and include is include just displays a message, but then continues on the rest of the page. Include, if you don't have it, so that's include once. If we change this to require once, and let's Copy that. There we are. So the first failure message shows up, but nothing after that. These ones are all failing as well, but because I said require, it failed here. Nothing else happened after that point. So I'll put these back to include once. There we are. We get all the error messages. I go back to footer and then we're working again. And only one copy is showing up because I've got the once. And even if it's content that doesn't have anything visual about it. So let's say up here, I'm going to require once my include called inc session.php. Let's say this is where I'm going to validate whether or not the person's allowed to be there. I'm going to create session variables and so on. Right now it's doing nothing. It's just a blank page. But inside of here, no visible content. I'm just going to call session start to create a session variable. We refresh. Everything's fine. We can come back into here and say if not is set session. Uh, let's say user ID. There's no user ID session variable that has been set yet. So we're pretending here the person's not logged in. Okay, so I'm exiting which means I'm stopping right now. I'm just looking at this page. This is the message that I'm going to see. I'm starting a session, looking to see if there's a session cookie. If there is, I get the file. I look for this variable. If it doesn't exist, I write this message. Okay, let's go back to the parent page. Back on the parent page. I'm on parent page. Refresh. This is all I'm seeing. So I've included this. The check here was done to see if the session variable existed. It didn't, so it stopped me. If I comment this page out, there we go. Everything works. I come back and we once again apply that. There we are. So this is how it requires and includes. Include once, require once work. The difference between require and include is that a require will stop the page processing at the point where it fails. Include will continue on after the error. Require once and include once do the same thing. They check to see whether or not a page has been included. 
and if it has previously been included, it won't include it again. So because it's doing that check, it is a little bit more processor intensive, so don't use it for everything, but if there's a situation where you really don't want the content to appear twice, let's say um, you're connecting to a database, you don't want to connect to the database twice, so use require once to connect to the database. Use require once to check your session information like we did here. All right, so those are includes and requires in PHP. Hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the bottom. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.